doing, YouTube? YouTube, what's going on? Trey back again. Yes, to hit you right upside your head with another video. Y'all thought I was going to say the same thing. Okay, anyway, this story right here comes out of Bloomington by way of Indiana. Big shout out to everybody in Bloomington in the state of Indiana. All my people in Indianapolis, Fort Wayne, Evansville, South Bend, everybody is in the house. And also, Fishers. Can't forget about Fishers because they get mad when you leave them out. And also, Lafayette and Gary. Also, you know, this story shows you why you have to be careful of people you intermingle with. People from your past. And we all know people from our past. Now, this story, it kind of throws me for a loop due to the age of the suspect and also the victim. It's like, you know, 11 year difference. And for them to allegedly have known each other since childhood, and the woman says out of her own mouth that she knew the guy for about 15 years. So 15, 25, that's 10 years old. Him, 36, 15, that's 21. So how do a 10 year old know a 21 year old? That's all I want to know right there. Can somebody just answer that? I just want to get that I don't out the way because it was about to choke me to death. Because I'm thinking like, you know, because as I do these stories, you know, I try to, you know, add the numbers up. I try to think of this possibility, this possibility, the age range and whatnot. But if you knew this guy for 15 years since you was a kid, because he wasn't a kid. Because last time I checked, 21 is not a child. Because the way the other story have it is, that's why you have to cross-reference these stories, is that they knew each other from childhood. So it made it seem like they were both the same age. But as I dug a little deeper with this shovel, Come to find out, she's 25, he's 36, but they've known each other 15 years. You tell me how that worked. Unless y'all was next door neighbors and he knew you from a little girl. But how do he know to reconnect with you years later? But this guy was on the run, had all kinds of damn charges and everything in Louisiana uh, with guns, all kinds of shit. So he was already wanted. And the smartest thing he could have done, other than turning himself in and, and living a new life, was to treat the person who was trying to help him right now. Not only was they staying in various motels, but you can kind of think that or be led to believe that this woman was the one footing the bill, paying for it. And this the main person he decides to assault and go crazy on. So she was like, the hell with this. I'm going to drive his butt right to the police station. So as they was getting in the car leaving, he's thinking that he's fleeing somewhere else. She drive his butt right to the police station and jump out. And they got him. Period, point blank. I mean, you don't. it don't get no simpler than that. Imagine if you're a police or somebody and you've been looking for a person they wanted somewhere else and they just pop right up at your damn doorstep. You're like, oh, Lord, look at the hair on Fluffy. I'm going to read a snippet from the story and I'm going to give my opinion. Surely, as we go, woman outsmarts dumbass kidnapper drives him to Bloomington Police Station. You did not see you was going to a damn police station. You ain't never watched Lethal Weapon, Die Hard. You ain't never watched none of that stuff, Fast and the Fury. You just roll out the car. It really works on a movie. Just don't get your leg or your head caught up. But I'm sure if you could propel yourself far enough, you could have jumped out that damn car. Well, you're going to just sit there while she pulled right up to the police station? Who does that? I don't understand. I mean, ain't no such thing like Ma B saying, rest in peace, Project. Shout out to Havoc. Ain't no such thing as halfway crooks. This is what you call a halfway crook. His brain was half-baked. Not developed yet, evidently, because ain't no way in hell I'm going to run somewhere else. And I'm going to get in a car, and I'm seeing you drive to a police station, because the guy clearly wasn't blind. If that's the case, he wouldn't have had none of these charges in the beginning. So you clearly seeing this woman driving you there. Picture that. you seeing this woman driving you to a damn police station, and you still sit in the car? Who does that? Now, a woman outsmarted her captor by driving him to the Bloomington Police Department. When she reported, he pulled out a gun and demanded she drive him to an apartment complex. You damn dumb. And she would have did it if you didn't pull out a damn gun. She was already standing in motels with you. What was going on in the motels? Was that was that friendship that strong? I remember y'all knew each other 15 years ever since y'all was kids. Uh, well, since you was a kid because he's 11 years older than you. So I'm pretty sure some other things, strange pieces going on for some change up in them hotel rooms. But, you know, that's y'all business. Now, police said around 1.30 a.m., too early in the morning for that. Sunday, the 25-year-old ran inside their lobby and told officer she had just been held at gunpoint. Imagine it, if you, Officer Gumshoe, and a Gumshoe is a rookie cop for those who don't know because I got law enforcement in my family. Gumshoe is a rookie cop. Now, imagine you sitting there, got your feet kicked up on your desk, just lean back, lean back like you fat Joe or somebody, and a woman come in there all distraught, just shook her from her head to her toe, and she looks at you and tell you, look, you need to drop that donut. Put that coffee down. I just been held at gunpoint, and you got that coffee right here and you got the donut right here you take one more bite of that damn coffee and chug it with that damn donut like you don't hit a uh, can of that 211 beer 
And you say, well, where he at? He's right outside. You're like, oh, my goodness. Good for her. Somebody was watching her surroundings. And also, she realized that she was passing the police station department and having the courage to stop the vehicle, jump out, and run. Bloom Bloomington Police Lieutenant Ryan Pedigo said. So, you know, good somebody was watching out for her. I guess that's the most high in that. You know, she realized that she was passing the police station. Oh, now's my time to go because you don't know he might kill me or any damn thing. And most likely the way he looked, he looked like Jamie Foxx said, kind of crackish. He looked crackish. He had a white stuff substance. I don't know if that was dried up spit or whatever. He just looked totally disgusting, period. Nasty. Ain't no way in hell I would have been in a motel room with him. I wouldn't have been nowhere around him, even if I didn't know the shit he was going through. I'm like, oh, you looking like that? It's a reason why you looking bad. Forget it. We being childhood friendship. I don't see some of my people I knew from childhood. Guess what? I drive right on by. Matter of fact, I speed the hell up. Let's continue. Investigator said the woman told them she knew. Mm -mm -mm. Travis Moore, 36 years old, look every bit. 66 in the face. No offense to my people out there, 66 years old. Some of you all right now, ah, shit, I look better than him. For about 15 years. Now, you ask me how I do a 36-year-old know a 25-year-old for the last 15 years. And they recently reconnected on social media. God damn, he's a felon in, well, he's a bad felon. But why would you be on social media if you on the, the run from various assault weapon charges, weapon charges and stuff? Wow, like, you a dumbass felon. No wonder you got caught like that. Now, they recently connected on social media. She drove to Mississippi. She drove to the SIP. You know what they call Mississippi? That SIP, just like they call Pontiac, Yak Town. You know that Yak. She drove down to the SIP last week to pick more up, then returned to Bloomington. So this woman drove way from Indiana to pick your sorry ass up. And the way you repay her is by trying to pull a 187, a kick dough on her, pulling a gun on her and threatening her life. Now, you know, she drove from way up the damn Indiana all the way down south that she would drive your ass to an apartment complex without you pulling a gun on her. But what you want to do, you wanted to take this woman car. You wanted transportation, and you was using this woman in terms of hoping that you would get her somewhere and kill this woman and use her vehicle, period. And they can report the car stolen or whatnot, but if he wouldn't have did it to her, guess what? He would have went and found him something else. He would have found another way to get him a vehicle. You got to be aware. When people reach out to you from your past, remember this. If you don't take nothing else from the video, when people reach out to you from your past, it's for a specific reason. Because why? What took you so long to remember me? If I mean that much in your life, what took you so long to remember me? That's all I want to know. Can somebody answer that? You got to think like Rita said and put some respect on my name like Birdman said. Let's continue. Now, she drove down to the SIP last week, Mississippi, to pick more up and then return to Bloomington. Ooh, she bowed it, bowed it in, rowdy, rowdy. They stayed at various hotels. So it, showed her, it goes to show you she'll ride or die. So why would you try to pull a gun out on her and try to make her die? But Saturday night, things took a turn when she left and returned to the hotel. Now, she left. Came back to his sorry ass. And that's when he want to turn to uh Mr. Hyde. First, he was Dr. Jekyll with the sinister stuff. Then he, she come back. He's Mr. Hyde. Now, he's fully showing who he is. For those of you all know the story of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Now, when she returned, he locked her out. So she said that she was then walking towards her vehicle. When she saw him running behind her, she said that she was scared for her safety. Make me want to cry damn near. She said she was scared for her safety, so she did run to her car. Lieutenant Pettigrew said, Lieutenant Pettigrew is on his job. Big shout out to you. Salute you, soldier. But anyway, now imagine you. If you done went down to the Mississippi, if you in Mississippi, imagine you going to California, you going to pick some ninja up, and you drive back to Mississippi, and you house them, you feeding them. He ain't got no damn money. He ain't out there robbing stores and shit. He ain't got no money, so she's taking care of this bastard. You feel me? And then, that bastard get the idea they want to come after you and kill you. That's why I said he's crackish. Ain't number crack could do that. Because how in the hell could you be so sane all the way from Mississippi to Indiana, chill for a while, and then all of a sudden you flip out on a Saturday night. That's when that fix, he needed that fix, started losing there twitching and shit, and he needed to get the way out. Now, police said she told them he ran to the car, pointed a gun at a friend in the car, and told him to get out or he would be shot. Damn, who was the friend? That was your boyfriend? The friend got out, cussing his ass out, probably like, you dirty joke. If you didn't have that gun, I'd knock a patch of hair out your head. The woman got in and tried to back out. She like, the hell with this? You is not finna take my Subaru. She said the suspect then jumped into the car with her. He supposed to lock the doors. 
pointed a gun at her and ordered her to drive him to an apartment complex here in town. And guess who said it? Yeah, somebody said Lieutenant Pettigrew said that. Lieutenant Pettigrew is on his damn job today. Salute him with the other hand. Police said during the drive, she realized she was passing the police department. She did a U-turn, stopped the car, and ran into the lobby. The vehicle was gone when officers arrived on station, so they began searching for it. One of the officers on patrol saw a vehicle that matched the description she provided officers for. And guess who said it? Lieutenant Pettigrew. Officers stopped the car and arrested more dumbass. Full of that booger sugar and stuff. Boy, more you is one dumb, you is one dumb son of a you know what. Police said doing questioning, more admitted to having firearms earlier in the evening, but that he discarded it. Why would you want to admit that shit? Just let him tell on you. Police have not been able to find it. Yeah, he probably he probably done punned it off for a piece of crack rock. He's facing charges of kidnapping, <laughs> intimidation, vehicle theft, possession of a handgun without a license, and driving while suspended in the worst charge of it all, which brings on instant death. Yes, you remember. Aggravated stupidity. Yes, he's got charged with aggravated stupidity. So he can forget about Louisiana charges. He can forget Mississippi charges. Indiana going to deal with your ass. They're going to deal with you like Jughead. Y'all know who Jughead is. Peyton Manning used to deal and throw that rock. They're going to throw your ass somewhere and you ain't coming back. Boomerang style, part two. Now, also, here's what one of them says. I, call, I caution people that if it's someone that you are not familiar with, and someone who you don't obviously know their intentions and you don't know them very well, it's best to get to know them a little bit more. Lieutenant Pedagog said it. Lieutenant Pedagog is saying everything. Everything he said, they put it at the end. They want you to know where the information coming from. Now, police said it turns out Moore was already wanted. He was already wanted, and he going to do more dumb shit to the main person who's trying to help him. He had an outstanding arrest warrant from Louisiana for assault with a firearm and dealing a firearm with an obliterated serial number, which means it was stolen, and was wanted oh Lord, by the ATL for a charge of being a felon in possession of a firearm. He was also wanted in Johnson County for driving while suspended in public intoxication. He's wanted all over the damn world. He's not wanted. He's not wanted no more. In Indiana, period. It's a good thing that she used her mind and jumped the hell out that car because I tell you one thing: when people try to reconnect with you from your past, remember this: it is it is for a specific reason. Be cautious, move with thought, be vigilant. You have to think of what could go wrong in this situation. Why is this person reaching out to me? That's the first thing I think because you ain't getting no money. Period, point blank. So what you want from it? Tell me what you want from it. That's all I know. Let me know what you all think in the comment section about this dumbass dude, Travis Moore. Oh, you get more stuff. Boy, if I was your mama or your daddy somewhere, you know, and if they're deceased, sorry, may they rest in peace, condolences. But if I was your mom and dad somewhere and I, and, and, and I was alive and I seen my son do this, I wouldn't even, I would, I would just disown that bastard. So I'll send them one money order, one money order with one letter. I tell them, you take this money and shove it. Right up your ass. That's, that's exactly what I would have said. Let me know what you all think about this uh, crazy-ass story right here. If you like the video, push that like button. If you like the video, subscribe to the channel. Definitely share this video with your family and friends who are thinking about doing something stupid to somebody who's trying to help you. Have you ever not heard, have you not heard the old saying, don't bite the hand that's feeding you, housing you, and hiding you? You don't do that. Anyway, y'all have a good day. I am out.